So today we're going to make congee and uh, specifically crock pot congee, which is super easy to make and um, you do almost nothing, frankly. So this should be a pretty quick video. We're gonna throw it all together tonight and plug it in, leave it overnight, and then in the morning we'll show you what we put in kanji to make a really nice breakfast. So kanji goes by some other names. Um, in English you'll sometimes hear it referred to as rice gruel, which I gotta say is not very appetizing. A staple of the workhouses. <laughs> and um, yeah, gruel is just a bad word in English, although it's fairly appropriate for the consistency because it's kind of like oatmeal, but runnier. Um, and you'll also hear it called juk if you have, a, I believe that's a Cantonese uh, word for it. So um, look for that if you're looking to buy it somewhere. But basically it's super watered down rice turned into a lovely soupy kind of uh, food that then you add all sorts of flavorings to because the rice itself is super neutral so you can add sesame oil and ginger and mushrooms and meat and all sorts of things but we're gonna start by making a pretty basic uh, kanji and then we'll show you like I said tomorrow morning what it is we're gonna eat it with it's a vehicle for condiments it is a vehicle for condiments absolutely so um, Rob likes his thinner then I like mine. Today we're doing my version. My version is one part rice to nine parts liquid. Rob's would probably be closer to 10. And if you get online, you'll see there are all sorts of variations, depending on whether you're doing it in a crock pot or you're doing it on the stove. So how long it's cooking and how thin or thick you want it to be. In my um, opinion, I like it a little bit thicker and also it sets up in the fridge because you're going to have leftovers guaranteed unless you're feeding a whole lot of people and you can thin it out as you go by adding stock or water to it if that's your preference and then you can avoid divorce so it's yeah it's always good to <laughs> avoid the divorce over Come breakfast um, so we're going to start by telling you what goes into it so we've got here one cup of jasmine rice this is white rice. Um, sometimes I make a third of that, a short grain brown rice, just to add some more uh, vitamins and minerals and things. But today we're going pretty simple with the one part, um, which is one cup in this case, of jasmine rice. Here we have three white shiitake mushrooms uh, that we're gonna throw in to- Those, those are dried, right? Yes, these yeah. are dried. I'm sorry, quite right, Rob, these are dried. You can get them fresh um, here in, in Vancouver, in um, Chinatown, in lots of, lots of Asian stores. But these ones happen to be dried. And you know what? You don't need them if you can't find them. You could put in button mushrooms. It won't taste anywhere near the same. But you know, hey, if you like mushrooms, you can add pretty much anything to this. We've got a few medallions of ginger here. I just cut some thin ginger. I didn't bother to take the peel off of it because we're not actually going to be eating this. This is flavoring it. Here we have some dried shrimp again bought in Chinatown and I just uh, chopped it up. I think there's probably about a tablespoon and a half there and I chopped it up a little fine because it's really, the dried shrimp are really quite strong and I don't like taking a bite into a whole one. Rob does. <laughs> okay, we're making my version to today. Each their own. <laughs> so, uh, well, I also have here for liquid. Now you can use water, 100% water. You can use 100% stock. Um, what I'm doing here is a little bit of both. I have because we're doing one part rice to nine parts liquid. I have seven and a half cups of water here with one and a half cups of stock, which makes a total of nine cups for our one cup of rice. And it is so simple. This is just silly that I'm even showing you how to do this. But if you've never made crock pot kanji, you know, you need someone to go, you can do this. If you, so, have, if you have an IQ of the low double digits, this is how it's done. No, my, the people watching this are not stupid. I know. I didn't mean to intimate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the rice goes in here. That's uh, one and a half cups of stock there. To, whoa, that's heavy. Seven and a half cups of water. Literally, toss in your ginger however much <laughs> you want. Over the shoulder for luck. Yeah. Toss in your mushrooms however much you want. And it doesn't have to be done all one at a time. You can no, it really doesn't. Toss in your shrimp. Now, 
One of the great things that can go into this at this point, if you have access to it, we're out right now and uh, with all the quarantine, lockdown, COVID-19 stuff going on, we haven't been to Chinatown to check it out, um, is dried scallops, oh, yes. which are fabulous. And you can get inexpensive ones right up to outrageously expensive ones, depending on they've been graded for quality. You do not need your very, very best dried scallops in here, but throwing in a few dried scallops is an amazing way to add flavor as well. So I'm gonna give this just a little stir, just to make sure that the rice is sort of evenly distributed across the bottom. You must be exhausted. I am. Oh, so much work. And then I'm going to plug it in, put it on low, and leave it overnight. And then we'll come back and show you what it's like tomorrow morning uh, and how we're going to dress it up for breakfast. Before we do, oh. I just noticed that you have a price tag on you. And I was just going to mention that, so thanks for bringing it up, Rob. So we bought this crock pot at, I don't know if it's a Value Village or a Salvation Army. It was a thrift store. Thrift stores always have crock pots. So if you don't have a crock pot, if you don't have an Instapot, which I know are very popular right now, but uh, we already have a pressure cooker and a crock pot and, 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 so we haven't bought an Instapot. Um, you can often get one. This one was $12.99. You can often get them for $5. They work. It's kind of amazing. So uh, there are lots of things you can do in a crock pot and it saves you, you know, keeping an eye on things on the stove. So I highly recommend you have one if you have the space in your place to store one. Um, it's a great, a great thing to have, a great appliance. So, second, second question. Yeah. So I, have, I have a question. Um, yes. what's, what's the best kanji you've ever had? The best kanji. So he, he knows the answer to that, but he's, he's asking it. <laughs> we were in Vietnam. We were in Hanoi specifically. And uh, the lane that we were staying on, our, our hotel was um, sort of in the middle of the lane. And at the very end of the lane where the lane met up with the major street, was a woman who was from 5 a.m. to midnight, easily, possibly longer than that, sitting there with her little tables and plastic stools, and she makes huge vats of kanji, and basically you go and you order for a dollar or something, you get a big bowl, it fills you up, it's warm, it's tasty, she put pork floss on it, there were all sorts of lots of green onions, lots of ginger, super, super tasty, and there's nothing like, you know, sitting on a plastic stool in the street, eating your breakfast. Um, she often, she had chili oil and white pepper and various other things to um, spice it up with, uh, but it was great, she was a hard worker, and it was hands down the best kanji I've ever had. So there you go. We'll see you tomorrow when we talk about how we like to make our individual kanji. Good morning. We are back with our crock pot kanji. It's been cooking all night on low. And uh, before we started filming, we opened it up, gave it a stir. I pulled out those slices, those medallions of ginger that were in there because we don't like to eat the whole pieces like that. And we also pulled out those shiitake, dried shiitake mushrooms that have been in there all night and uh, slice them so that they're easier to portion into different people's bowls. Because a whole mushroom isn't as nice as having sliced once it's been cooked in there. So we have a bunch of condiments here. Uh, this is how Rob and I like to have it. Um, kanji can have all sorts of different condiments. We had one kanji in Thailand, again, side of the road, best place to eat, um, that had uh, pork liver and a raw egg. Uh, cracked into it and I think it had crispy garlic as well. Yeah, it, it was really good. <laughs> it was amazing, right? It was it was a really really good kanji, but not for everybody. Um, in Taiwan and in China, I have had a preserved egg, uh, also called century egg in my kanji. Again, not everybody's thing. So you'll find kanji all over Asia. Sometimes it's super plain. It can have just the rice no other things in there, rice and liquid, nothing else, and that's served to people who have been unwell and children, it's considered easy to digest and is supposed to help you get strong enough and back on your feet. Um, you can find it with an assortment of various, from very simple to kinda out there uh, foodstuffs. And I was doing a little bit of research and discovered that I was wondering where does the word kanji come from? Because I know it's not from Cantonese or Mandarin, and I had assumed that rice gruel was from China. Um, it turns out it's a Tamil word, and so that makes it South India, Sri Lanka area. 
and they have their own version there and apparently not only do you do a savory version which is the way we always have kanji but there's a sweet version with jaggery and dal in it as well um jaggery is like brown sugar so um wow cool so it's like oatmeal do what you want with it savory sweet whatever we'll show you how we're doing ours today so I'm just going to scoop some and you can see here that's the consistency at one to nine. Like I said, Rob likes it runnier than that. Um, it's like a scene from Oliver. <laughs> you want some more? <laughs> Please, sir. Um, so uh, the thing is that we aren't going to eat all of this this morning. This is at least six servings, I'd say, uh, which is amazing, right? That also makes this like poverty food. One cup of rice for six bowls of kanji. That's, you know, really spreading your rice around. So um, when this goes into the fridge, like tomorrow, if we choose to have some for breakfast tomorrow, it's actually gonna be a lot thicker than this. So I'm just gonna scoop some kanji in. And I can see those little, little flecks of dried shrimp in there, Ooh. which are super yummy. Then the next thing that I'm gonna put in is green onions, which I love. Just give those a bit. So that's just a chopped green green onion in there. And this is peeled slivered ginger that Rob did for me because he's better at it than I am. Now, here are some weirder things that you may not have heard of. This is called pork floss. I cannot tell you how it's made. It's one of the few things that I eat that I go, I really don't know how they did that. Um, I think it's cooked pork that's been dehydrated and that really doesn't sound attractive but it is great on kanji like I said we had it in our Vietnamese kanji and it is really yummy and you can buy it at uh Chinese stores um TNT we Osaka. yeah TNT Osaka that's locally where we we go but uh Chinatown um but if you find a if you have a Chinese grocery that has authentic Chinese food um you might you might be able to get it wherever you live and it's important to floss after every meal. Oh, no, it's not. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that floss on there. These also, you could make these homemade. These are basically deep fried shallots called crispy shallots, again, available in a jar um, at an Asian store. And those are super yummy. They're great, yeah. And then I'm gonna put in some of those mushrooms that we, we already sliced up. Then, it comes down to what other things do you want on there? So Rob is a big fan of, this is white pepper. Um, just a smidge in there. The secret ingredient. And then I love sesame oil, which is what this is. Just a bit though, you don't want to go too heavy on that because it's That's kind of true. dominant. Sesame oil is a very, very strong flavor. Now, you may have noticed when we made our kanji last night, when we put everything in there, there's no salt in there. So this is uh, really, really plain. I mean, yeah, there's the dried shrimp and the flavor of the mushrooms, but no salt. So that's where the soy sauce comes in. Um, again, I like a little, Rob actually likes more, but he's <laughs> always liked more salt than I do. Yeah. So you do you. And then this is a homemade uh, chili oil. And I think, Almost everything is better with chili oil. <laughs> so there, that is all my condiments. The only other thing that I wanted to say, other than how easy is that, and it's going to be absolutely delicious. Take a look at that. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so the only other thing that I wanted to say about this is this version has seafood in it and now pork floss. The entire thing can be vegan if that's how you eat. Um, there is no need to put anything, mushrooms and the ginger in there, your condiments can be shallots and chili oil and pepper and sesame oil and ginger and green onions. You do not need to have the meat or the seafood in there. So it's a really practical, easy, inexpensive way to eat. And it's real food.